This is unbelievable. The apology that ought to be given is to the American taxpayer, not to a government agency that is abusing its power. I, I, I am sitting here listening to this testimony. I just, I don't believe it. That's your problem. Nobody believes you. Come on now. The Internal Revenue Service comes to Congress a couple years ago and misleads us and says no targeting is occurring. Then it said it was a few rogue agents in Cincinnati. Then it said it was also on progressives. All of those things have been proven untrue. You bury in a 27-page letter to the Senate asking for them to conclude the investigation that you've lost Lois Lerner's emails during the time in question because of a hard drive crash. Monday, our investigators ask your agency whether any other hard drives crash, and we learned that six other hard drives of the people we're investigating were involved. You didn't tell us that. We told you on Monday. On Monday. And what did you do with the information? Because we asked you. Right, and what did you do with that information? You told us on Monday because we asked you whether any other hard drives crash. This is unbelievable. We answered you, you told us on May that you were going to give us all of Lois Lerner's emails, and you learned in February that this crashed. I did not learn in February it was a crash, and we you, told you on Monday. We I'm not asking you a question. I'm just making a statement. That. My, my apology. You asked taxpayers to hang on to seven years of their personal tax information in case, in case they're ever audited, and you can't keep six months worth of employee emails? I don't, I don't believe you. This is incredible. I have a long career. That's the first time anybody has said that you do not believe me. I am actually. I don't willing, believe you. That's fine. We can have a disagreement. I'm willing to stand on our record. I'm willing to remind you that it was not buried in 27 pages. Most of that 27 pages is exhibits. When asked about the custodians, we advised you what being we knew, forthcoming, which we knew for one day. Being forthcoming went, is to say. I'm sorry. You know what, investigators, asking. Congress, who's investigating this? Will you let him answer the question? I didn't ask him a question. Yes, the you did. Being forthcoming. The gentleman. The gentleman. I control Gentlemen the time. From I control the time. time. I realize that disrupting a hearing uh, sort, sort of. No, uh, come on. No, no. People, but the gentleman from Wisconsin. I am not yielding I time. I control the time. The emails in question are lost because of a hard drive crash that is apparently unrecoverable, which a lot of IT professionals would question. And you don't tell us about it until we ask you about it. That is not being forthcoming. And that's I, true. Well, I'm actually going to let you answer Mr. Ryan's question. Go ahead. Right. Mr. Ryan tried to lead the impression that only by being asked did we reveal the information about the hard drive crash. First of all, I would reiterate the information about the hard drive crash is in the emails that you and your staff have had for some time. Secondly, we produced that public report telling you about the email loss. Uh, on our own. It was not in response to a question. We will continue to provide you documents. You have 770,000 pages. You will have 67,000 Lois Lerner emails. 24,000 of Lois Lerner emails in the period when it crashed have not been lost. They will be produced to you. There is a distinction, yes. The committee did know about the hard drive, but we did not know about the server. The server means they're lost forever. A hard drive, drive crash doesn't necessarily mean that the emails are lost forever. Commissioner, I must tell you that uh, based on what we've heard so far today, if you came in here and said you agreed with everything that the Republicans have suggested, then they would say, we don't believe you. Let me say something, having served on this committee for a long period of time. You have an individual here today who has a distinguished career, who has served in Republican and Democratic administrations, coupled with the fact he took an oath today. Unless those here didn't hear him take the oath or witness him taking the oath, for him to take the oath and then have people suggest to him, we don't believe you. That is not the way this committee has functioned in the past, and it ought not to be the way we function going forward.